family, what's important is you must start, if you go to file, you actually have to start a new family. So if you go to new and you go to family. Now, if, if any of you in the class do not have this metric list of template files to start a family, please let me know because then something's gone wrong. Okay. So you need to start a new metric door. If you go to file, new, family. So you go to file, file, new, and then family. Now when you open this family app in 3D view, you'll notice by default Revit gives you a lot of information to start this door. I can. Why are you finding it hard to follow up the screen? Now, when you start a family, guys, you'll notice that it comes pre-set up with a certain, so it's got a reference level, then it's got exterior, interior elevations. You're going to use these elevations to build your model, but you need to understand, and you'll see that there's always a bit of text in here telling you what the, where the exterior side of the door is in relation to the wall. And it always comes with a wall in the family, because you're actually building this door in a wall. It will always host in the wall. You can make doors that don't host in the wall, but then it gets, there's a, a trick to using those, but you can make them work that way. Okay. Now, delete this extrusion. These are just extrusions that are stuck to the face. Now, with any door, there's reference planes. And you see that the reference planes is what, where we model around. So it's an exterior, and you'll see that there's an interior reference plane in place, and you're going to have a left and a right reference plane. These reference planes, if I stretch these reference planes, they always come constrained. If I stretch this, you see what happens? The wall opening gets larger and smaller. Okay. Now, the last thing that you just have to consider with the wall, there's a rectangle which is called an opening cut. So if you go to create, you'll see that there's an opening cut with walls that we always create. So you've got two options. You can either use that opening cut tool you can either use this tool over here, and if I select this opening cut and I go to edit sketch, basically it's a rectangle that will cut a hole in that wall the whole time. And your door just works around that. Okay. Alright, so these things out the box, they're easy to, to add stuff to them. You just got to understand that you're going to be working with reference planes the whole time, so you need to understand there's an exterior and an interior. In 3D view, if you go, if you go and create something, you must always set the work plane that you want to work on. So if I select exterior and I say show work plane. So it is recording, yeah. Okay, it doesn't want to press OK. Something's going on there. Okay, there. So now it will tell me that's my work plane that I'm working on. So if I want to model something on this facade, I'm going to have to use the exterior side. So I'm just going to create a barn door very quickly. Okay, so let's go to my exterior view. And I know that I want to set my reference plane. Um, sorry, not my, you must go and pick the plane. So create, set the plane that you want to work on. By default, it should be exterior if they've set these things up properly, which it is exterior. Now, a barn door, it's going to have a rail at the top. So it's going to have an extrusion that runs at the top where the barn door runs in. Okay. Now, I'm going to create two reference planes. I'm going to create some additional reference planes. I'm going to call just so that I can control the extent. So as the opening of the door increases, that rail will also need to increase as well to accommodate those barn doors that are getting bigger and bigger every time. Okay, so that's that's a rule that we're going to have to establish. Another rule that I'm going to establish, I'm going to create two more reference planes. And let's create a reference plane here, reference plane. I'm going to create, because those barn doors actually go past the opening by a fraction. So I've got some reference planes here that I'm going to now use to drive this barn door. Okay. So this reference plane, let's just check, this is going to be uh, my right reference plane. So I'm going to call this R, and this is door stop. So give it a name so that you know 
door S. So I know that's my right door stop, and this is going to be my left. Right, and this will be left. So let me just. You need to give these names in order to use them, okay? Okay, and I'm going to call this right extents. So these reference planes, just remember, you can make these the whole time. And EX, just for extents. Don't try and, if, if you had to type out everything, it takes time. So just use abbreviations to, okay, left extents, right extents. Okay, now, we're going to set a rule that this is always a certain distance away. So let's say this door is always 50 mil past the opening. Okay, just so that it closes properly. 25 mil, so let's make it 25 mil rather. I'm going to do the same with this one, 25 mil. Now I'm going to use some dimensions, so annotate. You have to use dimensions the whole time to constrain stuff. Make this one to five maybe. So I'm going to put a dimension here and here, and I'm going to lock this dimension. Likewise this side, only on the reference planes, the only things that you're constraining are the reference planes. If I grab this and I move this, watch what happens. Those things move with it. Okay. I think this is causing some issues, but I can fix that now. So you can see that these reference plans are always going to work with... Now, this, this, this dimension over here. So from here to there, the door has to go past the opening. So we have to set another rule. So as things move, that, that extrusion gets longer to accommodate the size of the door. Okay. So this is what you guys have to understand when you're creating these things. You've got to write a set of rules by which this door works. Okay. It's a bit complicated, but you'll, it will start making sense now. Here I'm going to use, I mean this just has to look okay, it doesn't have to work exactly correct. So now I'm using another set of reference, so you can see I'm using this reference plane to govern this one's width. Okay, now this width, we might have to use a formula for this. Okay, so I'm going to call this door um, run. It just means, oh no, sorry, don't do that. You're going to make this, you're going to, you're going to convert this into a parameter. So I'm going to make a new parameter. So parameters allow you to govern certain things with formulas, but you have to give this a name. This parameter needs a name. So I'm going to call this door run. Okay, it's just how the door is going to run in the track. Okay. Now, what's, guess what happens? If I use this other dimension now, I can simply go and say, actually, you're going to use the same formula. Okay, but now, let's just go and govern that correctly. So now, in our family, in our family types, you can go and write some formulas. You see in your settings here, in family types, you can write formulas. So in essence, this door run needs to be exactly half the door width. Okay, so here you're going to say equals to width and you have to type it in so type in the parameter name so width divided by two <coughs> guess what's happened it changed this formula if i press apply now if i go into my family guess what happens this changes but maybe i want to increase that i want an add so i want to add a distance to that so maybe in this add 10 mil or 20 mil just to be safe so i'm going to add 50 mil to be safe plus 50. So if you guys used Excel, guess what? This will make sense. Okay, do you guys understand what I've done to this point? We've used reference planes. Your reference planes are the bones to drive any 3D model in Revit. A lot of other software, same principle. You need something to drive something else. And a reference plane is your controlling element. Okay. And it's a work plan. Technically, it's a work plan. Now, I don't need this information anymore. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. I can get rid of that dimension. Okay, I think it's built in. So that's... Yeah, we'll leave that one there for the timing. It doesn't really matter. I can get rid of that guy. No, I won't, I won't get rid of it for the timing. But anyway. Let's go to ground floor very quickly. Now, if I change this width... What's your barn door width? 3,000. Okay. It only goes to one side. Okay, I'm making two that do that. 
All right, okay. Let me do that again. So, do all of them go to one side? Do all of your doors, or do they open in the middle? No, I was just Okay, 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 okay. All right, in that instance, guess what? I'm going to change this parameter, and I'll make it work in one, di one direction. So, let's go back here again. Here, I'm just going to say, equals to door width plus 50. Apply. Then I can get rid of this one side because if it doesn't apply on the one side, if it works on the one side only, I'll leave this as a door stop on the side and I'll get rid of this one. Actually, let's make the barn door slightly bigger than the opening. It will work that way. Okay. All right. So this is my door stop and then this is going to be my rail. Okay. I won't change the width just yet because this is not. Yeah, it will work. Let me just pull this to the side longer. Pull that to the wall. Okay. Now. In your full plan, go and change your width to 3 meters. Good. Now you can see everything's working well. If I go to my exterior view, you'll notice that this parameter is working correctly. You can, extend these to, you can extend these things to make them look work well. Okay, so now we set up some rules. These parameters are working well. Now I want to model the barn door from the exterior. So let's model the external barn door. Okay. So my exterior view, you're going to go to Create, Extrusion. Now remember, it's going to ask you to, to set a work plane. Make sure that the exterior view is set. Now, the extrusion is going to start at 0 and end at 250, meaning it's going to be 250 thick. But you want a gap from the wall. So let's make it 25 mil away from the wall. Now, how thick is this barn door? Say it's 50. Guess what you can do? You can say equals to... 25 plus 50. Now I can create an extrusion very quickly. Now with this extrusion, you want to draw on these reference planes and you have to lock and align these objects to the reference planes. You see this lock? Lock those two for the meantime. Okay, it just means that if those reference planes move, that barn door size will adjust with those reference planes. Now I'm going to say, well actually at the top there's a slight gap so I'm going to move this away. Now I'm going to use a dimension, annotate. So I'm going to dimension this from there to there. And that I'm going to give it an over. That I'm going to make it 25 as well. And now I'm going to lock that dimension to the reference plane and make sure this is attached to the reference plane. Okay, which it is. Lock that. Now I'm going to undercut the door. These are always undercut. Do that. Now I'm going to use another dimension. So you can see these do take a bit of work to put together. Tab, tab, yeah, I'll use this floor level for now. That's fine. And that's 25 mil. And I'm going to lock that as well. Now if I complete this 3D. Now in 3D view, change my scale 1 to 20. Now you can see on the exterior side of my... Okay, it's minus 25, my bad. Minus 25 and minus 75. There we go. Now, if you see on the exterior side of this, this wall, my door is now sitting here on the exterior. Okay, can you guys see that? Alright, so you've got this exterior door on the exterior now. Now the last thing I need to do is, is create the rail at the top, but I'll add some more detail to this. And because it's a door, select this object and you need to start giving these things categories and materials. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a subcategory and you're going to make this um, door panel. It's a door panel. So I just want to ask, this little wall that's around the door? Um, it's always there. Know, so that's going to show that it's hosted to a wall. It's just so if you pull this into your new project, you'll always try and find a wall to put this into. Okay, so then you'll automatically ask Jason, I don't think it opens from one side. It says rails from both sides. It opens from both sides. Yes, and there's a lock in the middle. Yeah, so it does but open from both yeah, sides. the lock's on the side. Sorry. <laughs> All right, that. I'll make this. This is a... S but if you wanted to make a single one, this is how it would work. Okay. I'll quickly finish this and then I'll make that other one as well. But I'll use this information because once you've got one door created... You can reuse this and make a new family from this one. It's actually quite easy. All right, now I need to create this extrusion at the top here again for the track. So for this track at the top, now we've got two options. You've got two options to make this 
this line. But I'm going to use an extrusion because an extrusion is the best way to make this work. I'm going to create another extrusion. Create extrusion. Another rectangle extrusion. And here I'm going to use... And I'm going to offset this by 25 mil there. And I'm going to offset this. That can stay there because that's fine. Now the same thing is, you can lock and align this to that, to the top of the door, because the door is always going to run. Or, if there are, if it's got rollers, we can offset this by a certain amount. So I'm going to just make this offset a bit. I'm going to use some align dimensions. Okay, so I'm going to leave that at 60 mil. That will work fine. And this height, I'm going to make this, this at another dimension. Annotate. That track I'll make about, usually they're about 75 mil. So lock that. And I'm going to lock that. And I'm going to use the line tool to this reference plane and lock that to that as well. Okay, and now this dimension, I just have to give this an overrun, annotate, aligned. So that will be 25, just so that it overruns by, and I'll lock that dimension quickly. Okay. Alright, now this is going to also work 0 off the wall, but 75, let's make this 80. Okay, apply. Finish. Now if I go to my 3D view, should have been minus, my bad. Minus 80. So now in 3D view, you can see this is the beginnings of my door. Okay. Yes, I can start using some extrusions here to make this, and I can cut out a track. So here I could actually extrude. I can make that look like a track. So if you cut this in sections, so maybe let me just show you how to do that as well. So I can make this actually look like a, a track. I could actually turn this into a track quite easily okay so I'll show you how to do that in a second but here I've got my door now if I insert this into my project quickly save this and we save this stuff save as family and let me just change this quickly and make this give this a parameter subcategory um, let's just make this frame apply please give these things when you're making these families make sure that you give them a category so that you can control that category in Revit to control the line weights when you cut through these things. Okay. All right. Now, for the decoration of the door, you've got two options. You can go and model intricate information in here. You can go and model that information. But you can also draft, if the door's going to be one size, you can go to the exterior side of this elevation. Now you go to annotate and you go to symbolic lines. So what we can do is now you can actually draft you can draft on this door okay so you can actually draft the way this door will look you don't want to model this stuff because if you model this stuff now it's gonna it's not gonna work as well you have to create a whole lot of parameters it gets complicated so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset this by 100 I'm just gonna show you very quickly how I can make this look like a proper barn door so make this you can use model lines so you can see in 3d view as well so maybe let me do that that will be better so this is going to create model line I'm going to say pick face. Just remember, if you want to model something, you have to pick the face on which you want to work. So reference plane, I'm going to say pick. And I'm going to pick the face of this door. Pick plane. So pick the face of this door. Okay. Create a rectangle very quickly. I'm going to use the offset command. Offset by 100. Okay, good. I'm just going to model line. Create model line quickly. Here I'm going to say rectangle offset by 100. Now if I click, if I draw around this, press spacebar, it will offset in, internally. So this is my door here. If I go to 3D view now, because these are model lines, you'll notice on the exterior of the door, it'll actually draft 3D line work. So you actually draft in, you actually draw the, the pattern of what the door should look like. You don't want to be modeling those, you don't have to model the door completely. Okay. And here I can draw in some sort of structure because I'm in 3D view again, so I, I can actually draft this in 3D view as well. So model lines, pick plane. So here you just pick a plane again, pick, pick the face of the door. It's important, you'll see that the view will change. So here I can draft in 
the structure of the door. I can offset this now, offset this by 50. I'm just quickly showing this how it will work. You guys can spend time doing your own doors. Okay, I can use the trim command very quickly. So now it looks like I've created, I'm just showing this very quickly. Good, select the door itself, give it a material so that this will look correct. Go and find a timber material. Okay, if you don't have any materials here, there is a large library, so you can go and add um, you can go and add um, libraries, you can add materials to this icon here, so double click this. Okay, I'm looking for a physical material. Appearance library, timber, wood. Trust me, you've got a whole lot of this stuff, beach. Find what you're looking for. Okay, so you can add these, you can add these materials to this library as well, okay. Yes. Uh, it's just recording. So, uh, come on. Okay, why is it not giving me this complete library? Sorry, I, just, I don't know why it's not giving me this complete library. It should give me a lot more here. Okay, here we go. So, it's just hidden. Yeah, so I'm just going to use this wood here. I'm going to add this wood into my. So here's your your complete library. See this over here. You see where I found that. Okay, you can add this material now. Now, if you go into this project file, you can see it'll add this material. Press OK. So now it should say. Why didn't it add it? Now you see. Wood. Beach, okay, let's find mahogany. There we go. You're going to add mahogany to this. So if I'm in 3D view now, if I go to realistic or shaded view, fine, realistic, you'll see that this will look like a mahogany panel. Sorry, I don't know how good your machine is there. But now you'll have this mahogany panel on your door. Okay, you can change this material as well to, to like a metal material. Okay, so now this will look. And then what you do is this, this detail line work that you put in here. Make sure it's on a good category, so it'll be door projection. You get these different categories, so frame. So I would put this frame projection. Okay. So you can actually draft how this door will look. You have an elevation. You draft. You don't model every element of that door. You make a mass extrusion, then you draft the stuff around it. Okay. One last little trick I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how you extrude, how you're going to get rid of this detail here so it'll actually look like a proper... Okay, so this I'm going to go and model that. Okay, so I'm going to go and say pick plane. Oh, no, 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 no. So I'm going to go and say create. This is a void extrusion, by the way. Void extrusion. I'm going to say set. Pick plane, pick that plane. Now I'm working on this work plane technically. Now I'm going to go and say offset. And let's make offset this by three, three mil. Over exaggerate this, three mil, just so that when you do create the stuff, if you're working in this, depending on the scale, your line weights are getting, um, if they're interfering, you're going to switch off the line weight so that you can work with this. Now, all that I'm going to do is I'm going to create an extrusion through this, this object just so that it acts like a so it looks like a rail when you cut through it okay so let's just screw that up a bit I'm um, just gonna, it's gonna have a cut here so let me just do that again so this will have a line that will go up just cut this out the bottom so it just looks like a track this doesn't have to be detailed split this line over here trim this finish so technically this will get rid of 
you can get rid of this interior information. So when you cut through this in section, it'll look like a rail. Okay, and you can go and detail all this information, how the door works, but for what we're doing, you don't have to add any more information than that. Okay. Snap that to that. Hey. Don't don't waste your time modeling that. If you're not designing the door, don't waste your time. Okay, especially if you're using an existing thing. Okay, you're not using this. If if you guys are building a cabinet, then but you, there's still stuff that we draft. Okay. So this I'm just going to add a material of steel very quickly. Try and add the materials because when you cut through them, it will apply the right information when you cut through them in section. Okay. Yes? Oh. Okay, we'll sort that out now. I just want to finish this door quickly. So find a metal, and now I'm just going to add, um, you can see steel, lots of steel. Okay, I'm just going to add this one for now. Good. Make that my material, and it'll even look correct. Now I'm going to load this in. So save this family. Go save as. Save this where you need to work. Can you save this in a location that will work for you, please? Where can I save this for you? I, uh, yeah, give it a name, make a door, um, say it barn door one. Good, save. Now, if you want to use this door in your project, ah, we're going to add a flip parameter before we load this in, and you just need to save this again. Now, this door has got the flip parameters already used, so that's fine. So now load, load into project. Now I'm going to load this into your, your project. Now, if I put this door over here, guess what happens? And I go to 3D view. Now in your project, you've got your okay. So this barn door now is in your project. Voila. Now the problem is you need to this. You'll see that this rail will need an extent in which it goes. So just make sure when you put these things in that you've got enough space on either side. Okay, so you've got enough space and those flip arrows I've given you. If I flip this, watch what happens. Now you can see this barn door works fine here. Here you've probably got to nudge it because there's a wall there. Okay, but there's your barn door. In. Voila. Okay. So that works. What I might do, one thing I might do is I'll just hide that rail on plan view. So this is quite important. So let's go to my doors here. Now, this rail, this exterior rail, what we do sometimes, select the 3D object. You want this to hide in plan because technically it's showing. So you go to visibility and graphics. Now you tell it, do not display in plan or plan view because it's, it's not, and when cut in, yeah. That's fine. Okay. Load back into project. It'll tell you to override parameters. Okay. Now, you need to build in an arrow so that it'll, it's, it's, it's a symbol that's built in to show you in which direction the door works. Okay. The last thing that we do now, you go to reference, you go to your reference level. You can see these things take a bit of work. Create reference plane. And I'm going to create another reference plane here just so that my arrow can live on this reference plane. I'm going to create two more. We don't need to assign any parameters to this because we can set some rules for these for how these work. Okay. So you don't have to add any dimensions, um, any names to these. The only thing that you need to do is just dimension them to another reference plane to force them to stick in that lo location. 200. Okay, this one. So here I'm going to use, uh, just please press continue for me. Good. Annotate. 
aligned. So create this and that, guess. This is quite cool. All you need to do is you click this equal command. Okay, and then this width, I'm always gonna give it. You can make this arrow have a certain width or you can simply use the di command and dimension it to this object over here. At my time, it's over constraint, as to see. Sometimes it does. Yeah, I thought so. So, and this may be, get rid of that. I'm going to make this 1000 every time. So, click the reference plane if you want to move it with the dimension. Click that. Click this guy. Come on. Sometimes it doesn't quite work. No, it's not locked. 1000 and then lock it. Okay, I'm just making a little icon for this to use my. Okay, now this door is always going to slide in this direction. Okay, so in this we just go to. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. We'll double check now. You go to annotate. Now you create a symbolic line. Now this line, there's always. It's called swing. Door swing. Projection. Plan swing. So we use this plan swing line work for this and we literally draw some line work and we create an arrow okay just mirror this quickly literally this is all that we do mirror okay this guy just a little trick with this you have to make this a um, make this a group otherwise sometimes it breaks I've noticed in the group I'm just gonna use my line it should work should work let me just see sometimes these things work sometimes they don't okay now I'm gonna load into project load into project so there's my little error can you see that okay so now it's telling me that the door is going in that direction let me just go to this elevation and make sure Yeah, it looks like it's working in the right direction. Plan view. Yeah, so the door is opening. Uh, it's going in that direction. No, I think it's the wrong way. Yeah, that's no, correct. It's going in the right way. Good. Okay. That's how you make a door. But now you can go here and change these dimensions. So you can go and change this to a two meter door. And everything will adjust. Okay, that thing, yeah, that's there's an area with that. I need to fix that. Ah, you know why? This thing is wrong. That I'm going to work differently. I'm going to always make this a certain size. I'm going to always make this. I'm going to give this a parameter. I'm going to always make it half the door width. Okay. I'm just going to give this a W parameter. Oh, sorry, no, 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 my bad. Make, give it a new parameter. Call this width. Now in here, formula, you're going to always give this a parameter equals to width. Control C equals to width divided by two. Apply. Load into project. Voila. Good. Okay. Okay, guys, that is, it's complicated. Okay. This, there are parameters and this reference plan that we use at times to write but try and create them. Okay. There is an alternative. You can model these things in place. You can model these things in place, which I might recommend that you guys do in the beginning, instead of making these types of families. Okay. But, yes?